ocean. But as I was leaving at 9 o'clock in the morning, our worship team was in here getting ready for this morning. You know, you don't realize what happens behind the scenes for us to prepare for you, for your family, for when you invite your friends. So much happens. We want to welcome you to Lakeshore. We're so glad that you're here this morning. If you're brand new to Lakeshore Church, <clears throat> we have a gift for you. You'll notice over on this side, we've got a couple of lamps and some bags. In that bag are gifts for our first-time guests. And you say, how do I get one of those? You come up and tell us that this is your first time. And listen, you can come up and tell us this is your second time, but you didn't get a gift last time. We'll give you a gift this time. We just want to say thanks for being here at Lakeshore Church. And, and, and so, you know what, we also, uh, Pastor Victor is about to share a little bit on giving up here on the screen at the end of the announcement video. We want to make sure that you know, I mean, we're not trying to ask you for money, but if you want to give, you can give with everyone. But you know what? The greatest thing that you can give us is just a record of your visit. Just fill that information out. You'll find it in your card. Or maybe uh, uh, you can ask one of our ushers to get that for you. Just, just tell us, hey, we came. We loved it. We hated it. Don't say that. <laughs> you know. But, but put it in one of these boxes and, uh, and just let us know that you came. And, and we'd appreciate that. God bless you. Hey, listen, check out what's happening here at Lakeshore Church. My name is Elizabeth, and I have some announcements to share with you before we get to the next part of the service. Band of Brothers is putting on a Father's Day weekend family fishing day on Saturday, June 15th from 7.30 a.m. till 11 a.m. at Fountain Blue State Park Pier. Family members are invited to join so that fathers can spend the day with their families. We'll provide breakfast, but feel free to bring whatever food you'd like. Please visit lakeshorechurch.life to check out more details and to register. The Lakeshore women are heading from Lakeshore to the seashore. So mark your calendars for Friday, June 21st. We're taking a day trip to Orange Beach, Alabama. We'll meet at Lakeshore for 6.30 a.m. if anyone would like to caravan or carpool. Or you can meet us there. Bring your favorite beach items, pack a lunch, or bring some money to buy lunch from local vendors. For more details, visit the website or the Lakeshore Women's Facebook page. We have a new outreach opportunity. The outreach team will head to Heritage Manor Nursing Home on Sunday, June 23rd at 9.30 a.m. to bless the residents with a mini church service. We're looking for a few volunteers to join us, so if you're interested, please visit lakeshorechurch.life to register. For information on all of our upcoming events or church gatherings, visit lakeshorechurch.life. Before we get to the sermon, Pastor Victor has a short giving message to share. Hey, Lakeshore Church, I just want to give you guys a quick thought on giving this morning. And it's right out of Matthew 6 when Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, all these things, what he's referring to, are the basic needs that we have in our life. The things that we concern ourselves about. You know, clothing and food and things of that nature. Jesus literally says, if you'll seek me first, if you'll seek my righteousness first, well then all of those things are going to be added unto you. And that's a really strong verse that we've probably stood on plenty of times in our life. And for good reason. It's powerful. So this morning as you give, there are many ways that you can give. And you can give online at lakeshorechurch.life. You can just go to that website and you can find our giving page there. You can scan the QR code that's on the screen here this morning and it will take you right to that giving page. Or if you'd like you can just go old school with it and you can grab a tithe envelope you can fill that out and then you can go ahead and drop it in one of the contribution boxes at the back of the sanctuary or out in the foyer this morning I just want to encourage you again to continue to give and to continue to be generous but let's prepare our heart to hear a word from God this morning I'll just tell you this ladies when you, if you take that van to the beach I don't want to get in that van on Monday and there's sand in there don't expect us to clean up your sand. You go to the beach, you clean your own sand out of that van. Sick of it. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. I love to see all the fun things that we do and the opportunities that we have along with the summer. But you know what? We're glad that you're here today because we're starting off what we and capitalizing off on what we started last week. And we're calling this a summer to flourish. Because we found out last week in, in Psalm where it literally says that the righteous will flourish 
like a palm tree. And then in the next verse, he says it again. Those who are planted in the house of God will flourish. It says even those in their old age will, will now listen. It says even those in their old age, they'll, they'll produce fruit and they'll be fresh. Everybody say fresh. fresh. You look that word up in Hebrew and it literally means fat. So a lot of us are doing really good, right? Hey, the, the flourishing, the good fat, the kind that when, you know, you see an old Italian lady, she's like, you're, you're so fat. That's a compliment, man. That's a compliment. It means you look healthy, right? Flourishing is healthy, healthy. And, and you know what? We want to give you an opportunity to understand what that is and how you can flourish as you are planted here in the house of God. You know, a lot of people say, well, I, do, you, do I really need to go to church to be a Christian? No, but Christians go to church because when we're planted in the house of God, we have a tendency to flourish, to be more fruitful than if we weren't. There's more opportunities to serve. I mean, listen, you just saw we're branching out. We're going to be on the, 20, uh, the 22nd, I think. When is the, the nursing home? The 20, 23rd, right? Man, we're starting a new ministry to be able to branch out and do things. And today, I want to help you understand what it means and what does the Bible mean when it says to flourish. And so to do that, I want to ask you a question. If you were to right now, if you're, somebody came to you and said, so you're a Christian, good on you. But let me ask you this. What does Jesus want from you? You know, a lot of times when we talk about Christianity, we immediately go to what we have to stop doing or what we have to start doing. The question is, what does Jesus want from us? This, this Savior who was in heaven, miraculously came to the earth, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on a cross for you and I, took and was tortured in ways that we will never understand, and died on a cross. He was nailed to a, a piece of wood and then was put into a borrowed grave, but then rose again. How many of you know that I don't believe he did that just so that we can give him a small part of our lives. I have a hard time thinking that Jesus did that on the cross so that I can think about him every now and then. So I can celebrate him on Christmas and Easter and pray over my meal. You know, I did that when, when we were kids. My dad's here, and, and listen, there was a prayer that we prayed every, every meal. Bless us, O Lord, for these I guess which you are about to receive through the bounty of Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the thing is, as we got older, that prayer got faster because we were hungry. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, the prayer, bless the Lord for these, I guess we're about to receive the right across the Lord. Amen. And that asked Brian pray. It's like, man, I could, let's go. All right? It's so much more than that. What is it? Well, I think that we find it. I think we find it in Scripture. It's found in John chapter 15. You can turn with me there. You can open your Bible if it glows. You can turn the pages if you'd like. Or you, you can read it up here on the screen. This is the New King James Version. That's usually what I use to study, what I use to preach from. <clears throat> that's when you see that. That's what you want to you get something. You know why I do that? Because it's very recognizable for what I learned when I was a kid and in Sunday school. Most of the scriptures here I recognize. If I start reading out of another translation, I'm like, I don't think the Bible says that. That's not the Bible that I know. It's just a different translation. But he says this. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Let's pray to the vine right now. Father, we're just coming to you, the vine dresser. Father, we are coming to you because, Lord, it is our desire as a church to see people flourish, to flourish in their lives, to flourish in their families and in their relationships, to flourish, Lord God, in their school and in their schoolwork, to, to flourish, Lord, in their ministry here at Lakeshore and outside of Lakeshore, to flourish, Lord, in, in, in their businesses, even to flourish in their hobbies. Our, our desire, Lord God, is to flourish the way you desire for us to flourish in Jesus' name. Flourish. What does that even mean? It's such, how many times are you going to say it, Pastor Brian? Until you get it in your brain and in your heart that God desires for you to flourish. 
He doesn't want you to fail. He's not interested in punishing you until you finally get it right. He wants you. He desires for you to flourish. And something that is flourishing looks healthy, doesn't it? It looks fruitful, doesn't it? It looks like something that you want to be around, something that you want to be a part of, something that you're proud to have. And so I believe that God's desire is for you to flourish. Pastor Brian, you say that, but I'm just going through a, a bad breakup. I'm just going through a bad season in my life. Listen, I get it. Those are still going to happen. The key is we flourish through them because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, the vine, and his father, the vine dresser. And so the vine says, every branch in me, everybody say in me. Every branch in me, the vine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Everybody say more fruit. If you put two trees together, two vines together, two tomato plants together, and this one had tomatoes and this one didn't, you would look at this and say that one has more fruit. This one is flourishing. This one needs to get off whatever it is it's doing and start producing, right? He says, you're already clean because of, the world, because of the word that I've spoken to you. He says, abide in me. Everybody say, in me, in the vine, in Jesus, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Stop right there. Go back to that one, Matthew. In other words, he's saying, unless you are in me, you will not flourish. Your bank account could be full. Your house could be beautiful. Things could be happening and clicking. But he says there's something different about the, the fruit that I produce in you or the fruit that you produce while you are connected to me. What kind of fruit are you producing? He says, listen, outside of me, you can do nothing. Man, that's a, that's a big statement. Are you living with Jesus? Are you abiding in Jesus? Are you in his word? Obey his word. Because if you are, he says, you will produce fruit. Go to the next one. He says, I am the vine. And he says it again. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Everybody say much. Much fruit fruit but he's like I hate it when you do that Pastor Brian I don't feel like speaking today but you I want you to we bear much fruit that's who we are because we flourish I'm going to show you what that means to bear much fruit what kind of fruit are you bearing and we know that Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit when we abide in Jesus, it says his spirit is in us. The spirit of the one true living God now is in us. We are filled with the spirit. And if we are filled with the spirit, then we will produce fruits of the spirit. Proof that the spirit is in us. Fruits of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness, self-control, meekness. These things are the fruits that you will produce. And so I want to encourage you today to think about what kind of fruit am I producing? What kind of fruit uh, 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 that those that are around me, what would they say that I'm producing right now? Because sometimes we produce fruits of worry and produce fruits of anxiety and produce fruits of fear and produce fruits of doubt. And he says, those aren't good fruit. That's bad fruit. You keep producing that fruit. And it says, we just read it. He will cut you off from the vine. And so we need to start producing the good fruit because the good fruit helps us to speak well of others, treat others kindly, to love on people when, when they don't deserve our love, to forgive them when they certainly don't deserve our forgiveness. We begin to live outside of the box. I don't know of anyone that lived a more fruitful life than Jesus Christ himself. And if we try to measure ourselves based on Jesus, the question that you have to ask yourself, if he's telling you to bear fruit, obviously he was a fruit bearer. He bore much fruit. And what was the fruit that he bore? What would you say? Here are the fruits that Jesus bore. Here is the, the things that Jesus produced. We'll get to that. Without me, you can do nothing. The next one he says, if anyone doesn't abide in me. He's cast out as a branch and he's withered. 
And they gather them up and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it'll be done for you. By this, my father is glorified. This is the will of God for your life. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much. Say much. much. Y'all are, you know what? I could get the kids to say it louder than that. <laughs> because you know what? The question is, am I bearing much fruit? Is it, is it, listen, if, if you're bearing much fruit, it's palatable. It's noticeable. Not only do you have enough fruit for yourself, but you're storing fruit away for other people. Right? Are you bearing fruit? He says, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. How do we bear fruit? What is the fruit that we bear? At Lakeshore Church, if you're planted in the house of God and you, you will flourish, then how are you? How, how did that even happen, Pastor Brian? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you over the next few weeks that if you are going to excel and flourish in the house of God here at Lakeshore, we, we discovered it Wednesday. It's because, it's because you learned the, the value and the fruit that's produced through serving, through giving, and through learning. Fruit is produced as we serve, as we give, as we learn. As we serve, as we give, as we learn. And we come together and we are able to produce the fruit that God wants us to produce so that our Heavenly Father can be glorified. Here's the opposite. If you're not producing fruit, your Heavenly Father isn't glorified. You are glorified. And therefore, that is not Christianity at all. So what is the fruit that Jesus produced? You see, without Jesus, we know that there is no life. Apart from him, it said, we just saw, apart from him, you can do nothing. But in him, there is life, and life in him is flourishing. It's fruitful. It's enjoyable. John chapter 10, verse 10, you guys know it. It's our heralding scripture here. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to take your fruit. He comes to steal your joy. He comes to steal your love. He comes to steal your patience. He comes to steal your peace. That's what the enemy does. And he does it through lies. He does it through disappointment. He does it through, through people that you don't even realize. Backdoor conversations that you have that instead of lifting you up, it drags you down. And at some point, you've got to realize that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life, life and that you might even have it more abundantly. Abundant life. That sounds like a flourishing life, doesn't it? Just different words. Bear fruit, you're flourishing. Abundant life, that's flourishing. But you see, sometimes we don't experience it because we haven't surrendered our lives completely to him. We don't abide in the vine. His words don't abide in us. And so we've got to get to the place where that happens. Where not only do we know his word, but his, his word has changed our actions. We've turned the, the word from knowledge to actions. James said, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. We learn the word of God. Pastor Brian, I don't even know what that means. That means when I'm anxious, I have scriptures that I, that I quote to help me get unanxious. That means when I'm fearful, I have, I have scriptures that I've hidden in my heart. And I refuse to allow myself to be fearful unless a snake is involved. <laughs> right? I'm fearful. I choose not to be. I choose to, the word of God. If, if, if I abide in him and his words abide in me, he says, I'm going to bear much fruit and I'm going to experience abundant life. And if not, then I have to ask myself this. Instead of blaming it on everybody else, instead of becoming a victim of my circumstances, I ask myself, Lord God, am I truly abiding in you? And do your words truly abide in me? Because you said if those two things happen, that I will automatically flourish and bear fruit. No ifs, ands, or buts. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to go through hardship. People aren't going to let me down. I'm going to let other people down. But in the midst of those things, I will still bear fruit. What's the best way? What did Jesus say? How did he say that you can do it? Can I tell you right now, if you're not flourishing, you're not doing one of three things. You're not serving, you're not giving, and you're, you're not learning. And we've got to fight to do that. 
This is a place where we offer those opportunities. It's our best. The best thing that we can do is to make sure that we have opportunities for you to learn, for you to give, and for you to serve. I talk to people that are in such a bad place, man, where they're, they're just depressed or they're frustrated. Or they're, they get into that victim mentality. The, the best way I know to tell them to get out of it is serve. Serve somebody. Give something. Give to somebody. Give it till it hurts. Learn how you can, man, I'm just going to tell you that's the best way to snap out of your own frustrations. Snap out of that by giving, by serving selflessly until it costs you something. Because when you do, I'm telling you, you are fulfilling the word of God. Show me that, Pastor Brian, I will. In John chapter, actually, I'll show you Jesus did it. John chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. You want to know how Jesus bore fruit? This is how he, he bore fruit. He sat down with his disciples. He had a meal with them. He had community. He talked with them. He didn't neglect the time with his disciples. It wasn't like, hey, this is my last night. I got to spend time with God. He did, but he still, even in the midst of knowing that he was going to be arrested, going to be beaten that night, going to be spit on, his beard was going to be ripped from his face, he still sat down with the people that he loved, and he spent time with them. And while he was with them, he ate with them, and then he did something to show them how they can bear fruit. I love this. So when he had washed, he says this, he got up, he took a basin, he took a towel, and he knelt down, and he washed their feet. He served. He served. He just proclaimed the word of God, which says, greater love has no man than this. Then he laid down his life for his friends. He learned that. He knew that. He quoted that. But then he applied that, and when he did, he bore fruit. What did he do? It said, so when he washed their feet, taking his garments, and he sat down again. He said to them, do you know what I've done? Do you know what I just did for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. You want to learn life? You want to learn how to flourish? Then take a cue from the book of the Son of God himself who sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven on a throne. He was there during creation. He created the feet that he washed. How many of you know they should have been washing his feet, and Peter even said that. This is, this is a, a, a play out of Jesus' book. You want to be great? Then be a servant of all. You want to be a mighty, you want to be a leader, you want, to, you want great things, you want to flourish, then be willing to get down on your knees and serve. Get down on your knees and wash somebody's feet. I've given you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant isn't greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Flourished will you be, flourishing will you be if you do them. Ah, Pastor Brian, you know what? Let's just do church. Let's just come together, have a good program, put together a good program. You know, we'll help out every now and then. Listen, there comes a point in time when we've got to get beyond programs. We've got to get beyond preaching, get beyond music, and ask yourself, when is the last time you served somebody? You served them to the place where it cost you. Man, that, that is what Jesus showed. He said, if you do this, then so we have that. We have that as an opportunity. And it's not always in the form of being in ministry, being a greeter, an usher, a, someone on the music team, in the music ministry, someone in the children's ministry. Sometimes it means that you go above and beyond and you serve somebody who is in need. You see that need. You meet a need. Sometimes that need is just a smile and a hug. Sometimes that need is an ear because someone needs to talk. If you are bored in life, let me just tell you, you are missing out. Look at me right now, everybody. If you are bored in your Christian walk, it's because you are not serving. You're not giving and you're not learning. Well, no, Pastor Brian, I've had a rough go of it. Things have been bad. Things are bad. I get it.
that God did not create victims and he does not operate his kingdom according to a victim mentality. Amen. He says, you're bummed out, you're hurting, you're sad, you, 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 your eyes are filled with water because you've been tearing up and crying. Yes, Lord God, what do I do? Serve somebody. Wash somebody's feet. How's that going to help anything? There's something that happens when we give ourselves away. When we are more interested in others than we are in ourselves, that's the kingdom of God. It's this opposite kingdom. It's a weird thing. You want to be a leader? Then be a servant. You want to be first? Be willing to be last. You want to get through your pain? Help somebody else with their pain. Pray for somebody. I wish somebody would pray for me. I wish somebody would just listen. What is the last time you listened to someone else and prayed for them? That's the nature of it. That's what we do. I mean, listen, last week I gave the call and, and, and Giovanna came up here and, and said, we need help. Man, you guys responded. But there's more work to be done. It never stops. As we grow, and even if we didn't, there is still work to be done at Lakeshore Church, through Lakeshore Church, through your church, if you're just visiting this one, Sydney, who went on our missions trip with, a, with, with our missions team. No matter where you are, you've got to serve, and you've got to understand the value of doing so. Because not only does it bless someone else, but in turn, because of the kingdom of God, he says, then you will be blessed. Then you will feel blessed. Then you will know that you are doing the will of God and you are producing fruit. Giovanna, did you give them that video? Thank you. We just had a group that said, you know what? We want to produce fruit. We gave an opportunity and you guys helped a crew of, of students go all the way to L.A. When we've got, I know we've got opportunities right here, and that's going to open up. But we sent a whole team to L.A. through the Dream Center to go and produce fruit for the kingdom of God. Check this out real quick. Let Pastor me change G, your mind wherever you go, wherever you stay. It'll matter if you stuck inside that mud, the sun's still gonna be shining down on us. If you ever felt left out, burdened a week, I promise that the lie straight from the enemy. Coming for your mind, body, soul, and energy, but do not be deceived, cause you are loved, you are chosen, your body isn't broken for every door. Think so, let me change your mind wherever you go, wherever you stay. Don't you forget that love is always coming your way. And I don't understand how is that producing fruit? Matthew 25. And I want to close with this as you can put some music on in the background. The Son of Man will judge the nations. Listen to me. You want to talk about it. And I'm going to give you another opportunity to even serve on a different level. I'm so thankful for, uh, for Dr. Fauche and then Victoria's wife, who, who Victoria came and sat down with, with Amanda Schleusener and said, hey, we, we want to help you. We've been in churches where, where there's opportunities to serve. What can we do? And together they're coming up with opportunities to serve right here. One of them is right there in the, in the nursing home, Heritage uh, in nursing a home in Mandeville and, and, and who knows where we'll go from there but I know that there's opportunities here why is that producing fruit because listen you, you're going to produce fruit when you do it, it's, it's, it's going to open up doors for you that you don't even know can be open and I'll just tell you this Jesus himself gave a parable and basically said if you don't produce fruit do you remember what he said if you don't produce fruit, if I'm the vine and you're the branch and you as a branch are not producing fruit, do you remember what he said he's going to do to that branch? How do I produce fruit? When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, 
Then he'll sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. He'll separate, he'll separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. He'll set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. How many of you know these words are in red? Well, we know that Jesus spoke these words. And then he'll say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom that's been prepared for you from the foundations of the world. His kingdom has been prepared from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous will answer and they'll say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? When did we see you a, a stranger or naked? And when did we see you sick or in prison? And the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. You said, Pastor Brian, there's opportunities to serve right here. Why do they have to go all the way to L.A.? You're right. And sometimes God opens up doors. We walk through those doors no matter where that is. I'm talking to someone that works very closely and actually helped build the Giving Hope food bank over across the lake. And right now we are, we are coming up with an opportunity to have a Lakeshore Church serve day at that food bank be our week to take two days a Monday and a Wednesday to get people to load up on a, on a bus and shoot over there to serve the hungry right here in our own community but how many of you know that's in New Orleans what about right here Pastor Brian let me just tell you I want to skip down and I want you to know that the, he spoke to the ones on his left he said, when I was hungry, you didn't give me something to eat. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me something to drink. When I was sick, you didn't come and visit me in the hospital. When I was in prison, you didn't come and visit me there. What, it, just like he told them, I have prepared a place for you, those who are at my right hand, who fed me and clothed me. What did he say for those on his left? who were actually so wrapped up in their own world and providing for themselves that they didn't provide for anyone else or see any other needs. It's a scary thought. He says that in as much, in, in verse 45, as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you didn't do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment. There is a reward for those who do and punishment for those who don't. And as Christians, we are compelled to do. It's in us. It's in our DNA. It's in our blood. And so if you would allow me to pray right now, because I have a, another opportunity for everyone here to step up as you are in the house of God. Blessed are you if you were in the house of God. But if you're planted in the house of God, you will flourish. I'm going to give you another opportunity to flourish. But I want to pray for you right now because some of you are feeling. I'm going to keep praying for it every week. Father, there are people in here right now that are in that victim mentality. And Lord, they are struggling to get to a place where they are actually flourishing. They are struggling to get to a place where they are bearing fruit. My prayer, Father, is that you would help us to not... To, Lord, when you tell us that we've missed the mark, you don't, you don't spank us and discipline us. We don't have to sit in the corner with our nose in the corner. Lord God, you say that if we confess, then you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and you give us a new start. And today, Lord God, let this be a day of a new start where we start looking to produce fruit, that we start looking to flourish, and that we do so by serving others. Today is the day, Lord God, that we talk about serving. There are people serving in our nursery right now, people serving in the blue room, people serving, Lord God, our junior hires. There are people serving in a sound booth, people that served up here on this stage. There are people that are serving, and we don't even know they've served. 
There's people that came in early to make coffee. There are people that, Lord God, came into this place to clean this place up. Father, we thank you for their willingness to serve. But Father, I'm praying that you would help all of us to understand that being planted in the house of God means that we serve others in the house of God and that we serve others through the house of God. And that, Lord, your, your house is a place where we serve one another because Jesus served his own disciples and then turned around and said, do the same for one another. And so, Lord, I believe that it's the same for us that are in the house of God. And you would help us to get past the point, Father, where we are consumers, but that, Lord God, we are at a place where we come into this place to ask ourselves on a Sunday morning, who can I serve today? And we come in on a Wednesday night and say, who can I serve today at Lakeshore Church? And during the week when we're not here and they think, who can I serve? And they think of someone that they saw that's struggling. And then maybe they write them a letter. Maybe they send them a text. Maybe they invite them to lunch. I'm praying, Lord God, that we would get to the place where we would serve one another. Let it start in our home. Let our husbands serve our wives and our wives serve their husbands. Let our parents serve their kids and let the kids serve their parents. I'm praying, Lord God, that we would understand the value of serving, of washing one another's feet. And Lord God, just when we think that we're only going to wash the feet of those who deserve their feet to be washed, we realize that this moment happened before you sent Judas off. And Lord, that tells me that you washed his feet. He ate at your table. So, Lord, I'm praying that you would help us to get beyond this who deserves it and who does it, and that we would begin to, to understand the value of serving. And then, Lord, I'm praying that you would give us opportunities. And, Lord, even right now, if someone is hurting, someone is frustrated, someone is going through the storm, some, of, some people have had an earthquake in their, in their home, in their lives. Lord, I'm praying that they would punch the devil in, their, in his mouth by turning around, and and giving to someone, serving someone. That focusing on their own pain, their own disappointment, their own discouragement, but they would punch the enemy in his mouth by, by doing something special for someone. Real quick before I'm gonna give you an opportunity, what does that look like, Pastor Brian? You guys know that, yes, I, I keep, bees and 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 i had this crazy harvest just this past week and 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 i'm sitting down and and man everybody wants some i know that listen i don't have enough to go around i'm sorry it's precious that stuff is more costly than gold but I've, i've had i've had my neighbor tell me our neighbor who the last storm that we had through the electricity going out, we noticed that there was a fire truck there. And of course I was about to run out to see what was going on. But no sooner did I make it out that the truck left. But then that night we noticed lights and then we noticed an ambulance. And, and, and you know, we were thinking, man, Jenny's like, you got to go over there. You got to go over there. And I'm like, no, I don't want to add to the confusion. Not sure. But I picked the phone up the, day, the next day, called my neighbor. She's a lady that lives there with her husband. And she said, actually, that was just lift assist because my husband is... is is just at a place where, where he's falling frequently and, and not able to get up and I can't pick him up. And I'm like, you could have called me. You know, if I not made myself available and you know how sometimes it's like, it's a family thing. And you just, hey, listen, you would rather some of our strong firemen come in and lift them up. That's what they love to do anyway. But so what I did was I brought, I brought her just some honey and some eggs. Yesterday, two days ago. You would have thought I pulled a gold bar out of my pocket. When I'm thinking, man, this is my honey. That stuff is precious. You know, it's like, oh, give. It was that morning that I, I gave. I'm like, okay, Lord, she's getting some honey. So I literally poured it out of honey that we had ourselves. I'm telling on myself to Jenny. And poured it out of there and put it and capped it off and brought it and said, Miss Pollock, you're home, you're home. Brought it to her. And, and let me just tell you what happens when you give. Something that's very precious to you, right? That, that day, it was Charlotte and Poppy day. Charlotte was not feeling good, so she was inside. I said, hey, that gives me an opportunity. Let me go check the hives real quick. And she rolls her eyes and she's like, whatever, Poppy. 
man, I went out there and all of a sudden I had, I thought I had a couple of frames ready to, to harvest. I had six frames. And next thing you know, I, I, at the end of the day, I've got two and a half gallons of honey sitting on my counter, right? Give and it will be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. So then I'm going to all my neighbors. I'm like, hey, let me give you some money. And Jesus is like, it doesn't work that way, son. Right? But that's the giving. It's not always about money. It's not always about just your time. But you know what? We are going to ask that you would consider to give. How do I? I don't even know people that, that need food. I don't even know people that need water. I don't know people that, you know, we don't know. But you know what? Here in the next couple of weeks, this place is going to be a shelter for homeless families in our community through Family Promise. And I want everybody to give Miss Beth Bowles a hand as she comes to tell you a little bit about it. Hey, I need a microphone, man. I need a microphone. Come on up, Miss Beth. Yeah, you got to come up here. You can't not come up. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you don't know this, Miss Beth Bowles is a secretary for another church. It's not as good as this church. <laughs> no, that's not true. We know the pastor over there. We know the people there. Yep. So tell us a little bit about the need and what we're doing for Family Promise and how we can serve. So family... Oh, is this... oh it is. You got to put it right there by you. Okay. Just don't get your lipstick on there. Okay. Like Jennifer does. So Family Promise is the only family shelter for homeless families in the New greater New Orleans area. Yeah. So what they do is they have a day center and then they... Um, as churches to host the families at night. So it entails one week. So it's going to be June 30th through July 7th. That's over the July 4th holiday. Yes. So that Sunday, they'll come in in the evening. We give dinner. We provide a place for them to stay. Yeah. And then they go the next morning, they leave and they go back to the day center where there are facilities there where they can bathe, wash their clothes and, and take care of their daily needs. So all we really need to do is just feed them and house them for the night. So the need that we have is we need people to help change the children's area that first Sunday right after second service. We're going to clear out the children's buildings, uh, the children's uh, classrooms, and then make them into like hotel rooms, yep. bedding and all for them. And we also need help that Sunday the 7th at 7 o'clock in the morning to turn it back, to into, turn it back into the facility. children's facility for yeah. church. Then we have, um, we really, 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 really need people to act as like innkeepers, they, which just entails you spend the night, you get here around 8 o'clock at night, stay at about 6, 6.30 in the morning. We set up um, cots in the, in the pastor's office. office and y'all just you're just there in case they need something. Yeah. Um, we've done it two times yeah, now. Yeah, and I don't think anyone's Nobody's ever needed, needed anything. anything. Right. So, but it's just in case. And then we have two meals that we need. We need Friday night. We're doing a Mexican themed dinner. We need some food for that. And then Saturday morning breakfast. Everything else has been taken care of. Um, we also are taking up cash collections because sometimes there's needs during the week while they're here. Last time we had a lady had a newborn baby and we supplied diapers and things like that mm -hmm. for them. So there are some incidental costs that come up. So we're also taking cash donations to provide for that. Come on, give Miss Beth a hand. She is one. So I'm going to just tell you, I know. All right? Hey, Beth, are, are you, where are you going to be after service? I'm going to be right outside at the, their stable Go now. Go now. <laughs> right? I want you to sign up. I want you to say, Lord, I wouldn't normally do this, but you know what? I feel compelled today. Would you stand to your feet as I pray that God would bless you and you're coming and you're going and that you are, will be flourishing in, through your relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and that we'll all understand the value of serving as we are planted here at Lakeshore. Father, I'm just thankful because sometimes, Lord God, we make it more complicated than what it should be. And in the end, Lord, it says that all you want of us is, Lord, to, to take care of the needs of those who need them, to take care of, to wash each other's feet. We serve each other. We serve people in this community. We serve people, Lord God, in, in, other, in other countries by supporting missionaries that are there promoting the gospel. Father, there are so many people that serve here at Lakeshore Church. I'm praying, Father, that as we are planted here, we will serve here, Lord, because of it. We will begin to flourish 
like we've never flourished in every aspect of our lives. Your word says, Lord, that blessed is the man who loves the law of the Lord, meditates on it day and night. He'll be planted like a tree by the waters. When the heat comes, his leaves won't wither. He'll bear fruit. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be flourishing in due season and everything he does will prosper. I believe that. I believe, Lord God, that we will flourish in everything that we, that we do because we know the value of serving you by serving others. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Hey, let's flourish. Hey, once again, we want to say thanks for joining us. Uh, our prayer is that you felt the presence of God, that you allowed him to speak to you uh, through today's message. But we want you to know that if you need to contact us, you can do that at lakeshorechurch.life. If you gave your life to Jesus Christ today because of today's message, I would love for you to contact us here at Lakeshore. Give us your address. Uh, let us send you some information. I would even love to send you a Bible. Call us, contact us, email us, some kind of a way get in touch with us. If you'd like to give to our ministry, you can also find out how to do that at our website, lakeshorechurch.life. We pray that this is an incredibly blessed week for you, for your family. And uh, we'd love to see you join us again. But until the next time, God bless, and uh, we'll see you.